Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 216 of Fans of Power. I'm Nathan Kennedy, joined as always by everyone's favorite dumpster diver, Joe Amato. How's it going, Joe? I try. I, I, I do pretty well. I haven't dumpster dived in a long time. That was a long time ago. I don't do that stuff no more, Nathan. But uh-huh. yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean sure. when you're getting deals on stakes and if somebody else is doing that for you back, you know, some years ago, it's good. I mean, I don't know. We won't talk about that. Well, but, um, um, before you get into that, we were watching, Emily and I were watching a documentary uh, on, on HBO called McMillions, where basically this mob was rigging the Monopoly game. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that years ago. Yep, yep. And we started talking about it, and I was like, well, you know, Joe's like a mob boss. And she was, oh, yeah, last name's Amato. And then she was like, you would think for someone that was Italian, they would have more appreciation of food and not just eat stuff out of dumpsters. Those were hers, <laughs> her words, not mine. <laughs> was, well, I do love the good taste of food. Of course I do. But when you're catching deals, that's the other thing. You can't pass up a good deal either. So, yeah, you can make junk taste into something great. I don't know, crabby food. But, uh, well, we like I said, there's some topical things. We're going to talk about a cool story. I'm going to get the fans involved to where maybe they can win something later on. And uh, But first, let me just acknowledge the chat room. We have Fishy Toys, Zentron, DJ Tags, Dingalorian, Zen Brown, uh, Carlos... I always screw your last name up, but Carlos is from the Masters of Origins pay, uh, page on Facebook. And, of course, uh, we'll be talking about some of that, too. And JSP is here. Carlos, I think I tried to say your last name one time, and I might have butchered yeah, it, so and, I yep, apologize. That's, that's why I didn't want to touch it. always just stick to Carlos. You are, you are Carlos, Exactly, because I just want to play it safe. And also, I did want to give a shout-out to uh, Jason Silva, who left a comment on our Fans of Power Facebook uh, group page, where you made a post, and he said, you know, he usually listens listens to us on his commute during the week, and keep up the great work, and he said, I keep listening, even though Joe Amato knocks on my boy Stratos all the time. <laughs> so I just did want to acknowledge that, you know, there's like one more person, I think that's a total of five people that like that shitty character. But, Jason, <laughs> glad you love the show, and I'm um, sorry about your taste in Stratos and shitty figures, but but what the uh-huh. hell? At least yep. we got somebody that's a dedicated listener. And uh, I'm going to steal Joe's thunder and let's say hello to Adam Gabbert, Papa Hood 69, Mark 44 Prime, DJ Tags, is DJ, you already get DJ Tags, Curtis Ackerman, Eric Munoz, Michael Purvis, Wiley Collector. So yeah, everyone's starting to, to pile in now. And Hero Dan TV. So uh, on its, uh Oh, and it's Daniel from the Chicago Horde. So welcome. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of new people here that are there we go. in the that's chat what I like room. to see. Uh, Exactly. So we will have the topical things that we'll talk about probably later. First, I want to start off with uh, talking about one of the storybooks, because as for uh, before getting to the topical things, at least if anything, for those looking for the masters of the WWE Universe figures, I think Wave 2 started popping up at Walmart. Mm. Some people said they haven't seen them at their stores, but maybe we're getting them online, but they are there for those who want to get the second wave of figures. So yeah, I've never seen them. Are you... They're gone before. Go ahead. You, well, I was gonna say, like, I think the only one I really want out of that wave is the Rey Mysterio. Everyone else, I could, and that's the, the, ma- and, and the Macho, and the Macho Man. On oh, Macho, but yeah, that's the only way I can like Stratos is by through Rey Mysterio. I was like, now see, you made him look cool. I could get the figure now, so I can enjoy Stratos. But they're sold every time yeah. I would go to Walmart. I see that empty little peg, and I see the thing. They're just they're gone as quick as they arrive. They're gone. These yeah. things will never be clearance. Unlike the ring, which just, some people were like, they were out before the figures, like, what the hell is this ring? What's this yeah. about? And it wasn't really vibing or, you know, with people, but those and figures, they're never going to be on clearance because they're just going to be gone. Well, I I saw a couple more uh, Wave 1s on the shelf. I hadn't seen them in a long time. Like, I saw them the one time and then didn't really see them again, and now it's like, here's here's a couple of Wave 1. And if you guys are interested in the, the Wave 1, and you still haven't got them yet, you still can't find them, click the link down below. Manic Plastic, he's got each of them on sale for $10 a piece, and I think that the shipping rate is That's like six, six bucks, so if you guys really want them, He's got a set on his website, so go ahead and click that. And that's a good-ass deal, and when you think of Logix, you know, like me, think about it. You know, I'm going to look for these things, never find them, and I'm wasting all that gas money. It's like, hell, you could just sit there, order them, and the shipping, that probably would cover whatever you, you know, you pay for gas when you go searching, so that's a good deal. Yeah, you don't have to go with the eBay price, because no one wants to do that. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, you can avoid that if, if you can't avoid it. But before we get into the Origins card back art and some of the reveals and other stuff, we're first going to talk about a book that maybe Boom. many people have never seen before, maybe never read. 
and has interesting stuff. That's what I like is, you know, like we always say, stories back in the day, at least you had a beginning, middle, end, didn't leave you hanging. Like, I got to read, you know, 10 other issues or 10 books to get to this. But, and it had some different things in here that I don't think I've ever seen. And the art, I always hate it that I can't remember who this artist is. I know that, let me see if it's even in the book, because maybe it's right there in the book, but you got to put it up right there. But, uh, oh, wait, illustrated by Robin Davies. Oh, God, I feel like a, hey, I, I, hey, I avoided the F. Just I avoided a, Nah, nah, people don't want to hear me say that. It might happen. But, uh, yeah, I think that that's well, I, a, a I, person who illustrated well, all of Yeah, them. I do. Maybe. I, I, got that, I got that page on here that kind of shows, like, who was involved. But, uh, Joe, wh what was the – because I, I told you to just kind of pick something random and sort of off well, the wall. Well, I picked it why, because why we one? haven't – okay, well, I mean, I enjoyed – like I said, I enjoy all these Ladybird books, some more than others, but there's just – Things that happen in this that are a little different that you might not have seen in a lot of other stories, which kind of, to me, made it unique. And, of course, maybe other parts of the world, maybe some things like this already happened, but just something caught my eye. And, of course, I know we haven't got to got a chance to discuss many of the Ladybird books. A while back, Tyler and I, dis uh, I think we discussed one story from the big Ladybird book that had multiple stories, but this is just one of the standalone stories. And I was like, well, you know what? We always talk about everything from comics to cartoons to anything. And I was like, might as well give it some respect to show this uh, particular one right here. And uh, Zim Brown says, I have that on my Tales of Eternia uh, playlist. Oh, yeah, because there was audio tapes for these, too, I guess. I've never heard the audio stuff, though. I think on these, we heard the... That was the thing that the, it turned Tyler off on the other one that we did from the three, you know, the multiple stories in the big book right. was just the voicing. He's like, oh, my God. And I admit, the, vo the, the voice was... Yeah. It was some bad dub for speaking. Well, I mean, that, that, that's kind of a, a hard thing to get past for a lot of people when they're used to the characters sounding a certain way. So I, I understand that, but I, I think it's it was always neat to hear those things because half the time it was just one guy doing all the voices, you know? Yeah, that was it. It was this one guy and there was like just no emotion in some of the voices and every voice kind of sounded the same and it was just it was pretty, it was bland. It was, But I mean, hell, as a kid, I'm sure you might have got, you know, engrossed it and enjoyed it either way, just hearing your stories come to life. If you're not watching on TV, just hearing it. But yeah, through I guess hearing it for the first time through, you know, adult ears or whatever, was like, wow, that was painful. But yeah. story still good. Just yeah, the voiceover well, was interesting. Well, this this image that I have up right now is interesting, just because you, you got Gray Skull and then Snake Mountain and then uh, here here's a rabbit and a deer. <laughs> Just kind of yeah, it, it is weird art. I think they use these for all the books, but keep that in mind, what you just said about Snake Mountain. That's another reason that I want to bring it up. Just look at Snake Mountain in this illustration right here, but wait till we get into the story because there's something particular about the Snake Mountain that's in the story that I was like, that kind of caught my eye. It was different, but I'll wait till we – uh wait, wait, who is the character in front of the sun? Um, uh, maybe that's – I don't know. Maybe that's He-Man up there because these things, this illustration, this is nothing that's actually in the story yeah. itself. This is just like just art just saying, okay, now let's get into the story and bam. But, yeah, this art has nothing to do with the story itself. So I, I went but ahead, you, yeah, I went ahead and the, switched okay. to uh, by John Grant, illustrated by Robin Davies. Okay, and then I'll wait till you get to the story part, and I'd like to get your first impressions once you start reading or what your kind of thoughts were. But, again, we don't read it bit by bit right. because you guys have seen the pictures up there. It's your way of kind of and, reading it yourself, but we'll and, give you our and, thoughts. As and we we'll only read that when Jeremy DeWitt's back on the show because that's more of the, the podcasters of the universe's. Gimmick. You know, because and what's weird is that's something that way back in the day when I did Masters Comic Cast – I would like read out the new comics that were out at that time. And I was even making sound effects and weird stuff. I was doing that way back in the day, but yeah, definitely podcasters of the universe, Jeremy, that's the thing that he does. He likes doing the reading of the book itself, but here you go. Yeah. Go I, ahead. Nate. I, well, I, 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 now it's starting to, when you're saying that it is something different already here at the beginning, it's like, all right, they're going to get on the Royal ship. The sea Eagle. Is this, uh, and here's the the newbie question for for me to you and maybe this but... is the first time I seen Sea Eagle. This was nothing that I remember in filmation or any of the comics here in the United States. But I think this was something exclusive that maybe they made up, along with even hearing of Port of Randor Haven. It's you know like so that was kind of interesting. Just seeing them getting ready to go out. They're getting on this ship. They got something they're going out to do. You see, kind of a little bit of a 
Prince Adam, and you're wondering, okay, is this just his character in general, or is he putting on the show just right. to get everybody pissed off of, you know, doing his, hey, I'm waving to everybody and kind of getting his mom and dad and Tila mad, like always. <laughs> but that's usually, that's the gimmick, you know, he's got to put on that air, I guess, if you will. Right, and I, I think most of the time I feel like he just does that because it's like, well, it's something I have to do. I don't think it's, or do you think, I I don't really know well, where you know I'm going weird? with that question either. Do you if think I, that, that Adam was kind of that way before the power was bestowed upon him? Well, that, well that's what I was going to say. Oh, probably. And the thing is, remember, like, even in the DC comics, you know, before we had Filmation, when Prince Adam was first introduced, he was really he was really laid back. He didn't take his job as Prince seriously. And he would carouse and, you know, just be with the women. Just He was always laid back, not taking his princely duty seriously. And then, of course, they became Hema. But when it came to Filmation, it kind of became, okay, let's put on the dunce act. Yeah. But it wasn't really like that in the early stuff. And one quick thing that Febmon did want to mention about the stories, he said as for the big book the six, with the six stories, that was the only time that there was a single voice actor. So with these single story books, okay. apparently there was more, more voice. So and, thank and, you for and that. I, and I guess, the audio, the I guess the audio files are available. So maybe the next time we do tackle one of these, I can find a way to just – have the image up and we can just play that maybe i don't know well i'll mess around with it we'll see what we can do yeah Yeah. well now you see as they're getting on the sea eagle and they're all set you see this i remember the first time i looked at this book i was like what the hell is this little creature i didn't realize it was a head you know of course you gotta keep reading that's yeah that's what i thought too that the first time i looked at it i was like all right well this is just like a, a giant little sea blob like kind of sitting in a puddle (laughs) <laughs> it looked weird. Yeah, it looked like just a nasty little creature. But as you're going to find out, and you'll see once you yeah. flip to the next page, yeah. it's Merman's. Uh, you know, that's his people, the sea people. I think I think that's how they refer to him. I'm going to wait till you get to the next page because I'm just trying to remember exactly how they called him if they're the sea people. But I, that's what I like. We've seen stuff in Filmation with Merman and then, you know, his people. But I like seeing these different version these ones uh they definitely did not look like this in filmation this is definitely something again i believe is exclusive to these uh ladybird books but what i like is as you see merman's on his throne and of course he wants more power and he's figuring if he could do this if he could capture them maybe he could show skeletor he you know he's wanting to impress skeletor because if he could show him maybe then get more power skeletor could you know maybe respect him more take him more seriously and as you'll see, yeah, they find out and they get a message to Skeletor and Skeletor telling them what to do, but I'll pass it to you. But I, I think these little creatures are kind of weird, unique, and I'd like to see them in figure form. They're just strange. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad to have him as sort of like a army builder. And I, I dig his uh, slimy throne, too. I was kind of hoping that there would uh, be a, a little more color to it, but I guess it makes sense given the, the circumstance. You know, maybe, maybe just like a little more uh, yellow or gold in there to kind of make it look more prestigious because everything yeah i see what you mean not only that but just i mean when you look at this whole scene everything blends not only merman and his people and their outfits but the throne the background it's like the colors kind of are all muted together i don't i don't know if that's the correct word but they kind of just yeah they blend too much so some contrast would have helped but either way it's it's a cool design it's unique see and now i just imagine that, that joe walks to like the back alley behind the the Olive Garden and uh, gets in the dumpster and kind of sits there like the dumpsters is thrown and he's got like other hobos coming around like I found these scraps <laughs> sir oh perfect <laughs> I'm gonna have to, like, have to make a hobo Joe figure or something oh god there's the name hobo Joe that sounds like a perfect <laughs> Masters of the Universe name there we go oh jeez yeah, yeah oh, you, that's what that's what you should do you should make a hobo Joe either in classic style or vintage, and then uh, have people sign up like, like they do and spin the wheel and get your own Hobo Joe figure. <laughs> That'd be great. Joe figure, yeah. But that throne, I do like the throne. Even Curtis Ackerman was like, you know, that's that's a sweet throne that Merman's on. So, hey, you don't see many. You know, you're used to Skeletor. You're used to Zodak and his, you know, throne slash chair. But yeah, seeing this kind of thing for Merman, it's definitely unique. That'd be kind of a cool display piece, too. So, I have to remember that. I, I was kind of thinking... Uh, on this next set of pages that'll probably pop up for you here in a second where like all right so we're we're clearly in, in merman's lair and i'm i'm to assume that we're either is it underwater yeah yeah it's so, an underwater layer because yeah. even how you see it's described plus this is a different one i mean there's many versions but uh this one yeah you hear that and of course how either the outer gates of his fortress were thrown open gloomy comes flying through so yeah because they're, they're going they're going to try to stop this damn uh you know the ship going to try to stop that cruise ship and capture it in a different way 
as you'll see when they do get to that. But uh, yeah, this I believe was an underground one, and you so, see everybody's well, always got them on it. So we're saying like his fortress is underwater, but is it also enclosed, or am I supposed to like? Think that, no, it's right. enclosed. Okay. I'm assuming that you know, it's, I, yeah, like I, almost I was like an Atlantic. Say because like if he's got a TV down there, man, that's not going to do much good. <laughs> for electrical everybody, yeah. yeah, and that's and I was going to say, I mean, of course, not like Atlantis, but you know, what I mean, it's just enclosed. It's underground layers, so water's not getting into it. And then, but yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, they're going to go after the Sea Eagle, try to capture this thing in a unique way. And the and it on, takes. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say the Sea Eagles actually. Uh, kind of awesome because early on you, you kind of just got a, a good look at the front but here on this this next uh page it, you can see that it, it's clearly kind of like above water what? obviously it's it's almost like it's one of those uh big cruise ship yeah, it or, looks or, like a big or like one of those airplanes that, that have the stuff on there so they can land in the water so it's kind of an interesting oh, yeah, choice of design that it's not just straight up in the water it's just elevated and not just the throwaway design to where it was just like kind of a, like a simplified just boat that you could see in almost every kind of story but they did go quite in detail like even on the other pages you know you were seeing some smaller pictures from like the monitors and stuff but this you're yeah you're getting definitely a lot more detail into it so i like that they took the effort of doing that and as many said every time they see merman's sword they always thought it looked like corn i can understand that a lot of <laughs> people said it even from the figure i mean they say it looked like a corn sword but i'll pass it back to you i mean yeah it kind of does look like a, a corn cob that's been chewed all to hell mm, it's corn it's, cob, it's yeah. unique it's mm. yep and, and i liked how eventually merman here with all his sea people created the zero energy that was released to freeze around the sea eagle and it was taking the water and getting just harder and harder and thicker and thicker ice until eventually it was just bam it was trapped so they they got what they needed to do they wanted to trap everybody there and into this you know in the sea eagle so they're not going anywhere so at least something was getting done but you see the sea eagle here i, I kind of like that if they're discovering what in the heck's going on and you see the blast coming out of the eyes of the sea eagle and they're trying to bust out of this ice that, that can't even get them out. That ice is so thick and hard that this isn't going to do it. So we know we're going to have to be getting some kind of help. <laughs> Go ahead. What were you laughing about? Uh, I, you're just saying it was thick and hard, Joe. Oh, my God. <laughs> my mind's <laughs> in the gutter today. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I think, oh, that's I, I, well, I think that the time change kind of just really messed with me today. And you don't think about it much until the, the day of. So apologies to any of our viewers that aren't in the States. It might seem like we're doing this later than usual, but no, we just have the whole silly daylight savings time thing. I woke up and forgot about the time change until when I put it on TV. I was like, what the hell is this doing on? I was like, where's something else? I was like, oh my God, there's a time change. So I didn't even know about it until I woke up. So Spring there, forward. That. But no, it, it's cool yes. that uh, this ship has come equipped with the guns and all the, the proper necessities. It, it kind of makes me wish now that there should have been some version of this either in filmation or maybe just it would have been a pretty decent vehicle opportunity i would think depending they on came the up size. with some interesting things yeah. i mean i do like some of the looks and things they did for the ladybird books they had exclusive things i mean that's where like i said the scale cons came from which we eventually got a scale con in classics form never got a vintage one but so they came up with some cool stuff but you're right i mean that ship you see it's blasting from the eyes it's blasting through some other parts of the ship i mean it is well equipped and ready to defend itself but it's just uh to no avail being stuck in this ice here and as you'll see, we'll, when we get to the next pages, yeah. we'll have to figure I, out how they're going to get out. Yeah. I, Joe, I, I'm sorry if this offends you, but I just really don't like... I think everything else in the book is okay, but how Adam and He-Man look, I'm just not really a fan of. It just looks weird. Uh, it's, it's different. I mean, um, I think in some books, he's depicted and he's drawn, you know, a little better. But, I, yeah, I, you know, the, the one thing I used to get from people was said... They thought he looked really angry all the time, but I was like, oh, I mean, hell, look at the figure, the vintage figure. That looked pretty angry, but it's a different look, but I think, you know, it grows on you, especially uh, when you start seeing the other stories, you know, well, but I can see what you mean. Well, I mean, like, look, Adam right here just looks like a smarmy asshole, and then you look at He-Man, and it looks like he just, he's <laughs> taken his power sword and put it in a light socket. His, his hair's it's... all, like, frizzed out. I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm not a fan of, like, everything else hey, looks pretty good, 
We've uh, always said that, man. I mean, it's it's not something you have to like every single thing. It's something you don't like. You speak up, you say you don't like. If you don't like that, look, I can understand. What I do like is kind of something different. Like another little thing to describe it says using the power of the blade. He sent out a powerful telesummons to man arms back at Castle Grace called to join him in the Talon Fighter. So I kind of like that. You know, it's something we didn't get much of in other mediums. Not saying it wasn't done, but just to see with He Man using the sword to like you know summon and commun- you know yeah. communicate with man at arms. It's usually you know you always have the stuff back and forth with Adam and the sorceress or sorceress with somebody. So I like that. Like again, I'm not saying it wasn't done other places, but you know it's just something that at least can catch your eye here. Uh, the next set of pages here. It, uh, see, this looks better. He he doesn't look uh, like he just got out of bed or anything. Um, but it, going back to your point, it is kind of nice to see, as you said, the, the power sword being used for like other purposes than what you're not used to to seeing too often. But yeah, because you even, and again, could you even see that right there when he got down and he used the sword as kind of like a, a beacon light, you know, to a homing device for the talent fighter. So. You're seeing more things. Even the whole thing about the map. He's trying to get the map, get the coordinates so when he can get in the Talon Fighter. I don't know if it's like uploading into, you know, a database and, you know, you got your map quest or something. See, they had it way back in the day, even before it was happening. There you go. It's like he knows where to go, giving it the Talon Fighter the coordinates. But <laughs> I like that. I like seeing multiple different things with the swords, you know, beyond what you're normally seeing. Yeah, sorry. I was I was also reading the the chat at the same time, but no, it's cool because he, he's almost got to use it in a way as like an SOS to man at arms when he's coming to fly around too. But oh yeah, okay, I see you. There you are. So he makes himself visible to man at arms. Oh, you know, even a subtle detail is like that map that was on the you know previous page. You don't have to go back to it. But usually something like that, like in cartoons or other things, like they're like, hey, we got to get a map and, you know, puts it away. It's like disappears into a magical belt buckle or some spot you never see. Yeah. But just for them to go through the detail in the previous pages to show that map right around his belt area the whole time, I was like, you know, they're trying to put in an effort, which, you know, I can really respect. But I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just kind of thinking if. Maybe I should start to kind of blow through this a little bit faster because, you know, people are going to look at the image and probably try to just sit and, and read it as we go. Yeah, because some things are more worth saying for certain particular pages. Yeah. Some aren't, but of course they can get to it at any time. But yeah, He-Man takes basically the controls here. To, they they want to get to this volcano. They want If anything can, they figure, break that ice or get the ice yeah. to melt, is going to this volcano. So they have, a, they have a plan. That's why he has that map out to go to this place right here. Once they, boom, pop a spot and everything, bust it out, all that's going to pour out. It's going to get into the water. It's going to create the warm water to go to melt that. They're just hoping it can get there in time before before merman and his people but, obviously reach the sea eagle. but how, how many fish are gonna die because the water's gonna <laughs> Could you imagine that? get too hot you know <laughs> exactly cause some kind of like you know volcanic eruption it wasn't supposed to happen for thousands of years right. killing all the wildlife around like good job he man like you could have well, broke I the mean, ice yourself yeah, yeah but, like that's the thing like we're gonna fly to this volcano and then we're gonna shoot it so it, it kind of like self-destructs on its own. And I'm like, oh, the, the, the poor sea life under there. All of the, Some yeah, of them I'm sure like that, boil. Exactly. I'm sure that initial bit that exactly that came right down, it probably killed quite a few <laughs> sea creatures on the way there. It's like, yeah, you better hope the winds and the gusts of wind get this warm water. But it's a cool plan. It's something that deviates beyond the obvious of yeah. stuff, you know, like oh, figuring, okay, he man, you have to lift up the volcano or volcano and then throw it or something. And, you know, it's different. At least they're trying to do something else. So you know, I'll let you get to the next. Well, well, yeah. Okay. So uh, that, that's kind of when we get here with, with Tila and he's like, well, communicate and send out a message. So here we have Tila essentially just going to communicate with the dolphins and the whales and the seals and whatever Ew, else. This is what I like. This is the other thing that I do like. Just the description of when He-Man boarded and when he talked. This is the thing I liked about him. It says, He-Man hurried to find Tila and explain what he and Man in Arms had been doing. As the warrior goddess, or excuse me, as the warrior goddess, her powers were almost equal to his own. And he wanted her help. And I liked hearing that. I was like, you don't hear that too often where they describe Tila as having powers almost as equal to He-Man's. That's pretty damn good. But then you get to see more use of the Cobra Staff, which you didn't see much in a lot of other media. Again, not that it wasn't shown, but just seeing her Cobra Staff being used and how she can use it to communicate, like you said, with all the good 
um, wildlife in the water. I mean, all the creatures in the water. But that staff looked pretty damn wicked. You know, like, boom, when the eyes were glowing yeah. and you see the fangs. I love that depiction of Tila with uh, Cobra. But, yeah, I just like that description. Like I said, you never really hear Tila being described as almost the strongest He-Man. That's, that's unique. No, yeah, it, it's kind of cool that you kind of put everyone on sort of an equal plane because you don't want one to stand out more over the other. But yes, yeah, she summons them. Those who have a warm blood by command of the Lord He-Man. So we get like... The Lord He-Man. Yeah, that's a different yeah, thing too. Our Lord and Savior He-Man. Um, so we get <laughs> dolphins and seals and otters and probably puffins are flying around somewhere, I would imagine. I mean, it's it's... It's definitely interesting, and Hero Dan says, Merman, the hero of the story trying to stop He-Man from destroying all sea life, you know? like Yeah, how about that? Poor Merman, the only thing he was trying to do is like, you know, I just want to capture you guys so I can try to, you know, show Skeletor what I'm worth, and maybe I can get some kind of power. I wasn't going to kill you, but you killed half the fucking population of my right. sea people and all the things around. All right. the sea life is dead. That's the thing you don't see. There was like a, a an extra page that they didn't put in there or something that they scrapped, where you seen like just thousands of things laying <laughs> in the ocean as right. they were like, we saved the day. <laughs> Everything's dead. Uh, but uh, hey, you can't you can't have kids thinking like that but it, it's kind of cool they they call on the whales and everything to essentially push this block of ice to the volcano because he-man said there's not going to be it's moving too slow it's not going to be enough time to get it there so uh, that's kind of a, a a nice little thing make it made me think a lot yeah, again showing that it doesn't have to be he-man all the time but a combination with he-man and tila doing what she did where she summoned all them but of course he-man's still doing stuff but and all of them are doing things but it's again, it's beyond what you're normally seeing. Right. So just seeing that they're just writing something like that, it's like again, I can't remember the last time you see stuff like yeah. that. But this is the part I wanted. Yeah, with well, Snake yeah, Mountain. Go ahead. Of, yeah, you seen at the beginning how they did Snake Mountain. And we've seen Snake Mountain depicted in the mini comics as the toy. We've seen sometimes as well the cartoon as well, but. It shows that even back in the day, there was an amalgamation. Because some people said, man, it'd be cool to see an amalgamation of the toy with the cartoon version. And again, I'm not saying it wasn't shown in the past before, but I like seeing this. But the unique thing to me that I believe it was from this Ladybird book is just seeing that thing that Rotan shoots out of. Like, there's that part of the Snake Mountain right there underneath with that skull. And you see it blasting out of the mouth. I was like... Oh my god, what a gimmick of something. If the toy, let's just imagine yeah. if the vintage Snake Mountain was that massive and you hit a lever and boom, out flew the Rotan. Damn, that would have been a cool feature. Because remember, the Gyro Attacker is a, uh, that was a, a, a thing that was never released. And it would have definitely helped maybe hype up the Energy Zoids, you know, Rotar and Twistoid. Because that was going to go in there and they would like shoot out Rotar from the Gyro Attacker. So just the thought of that toy we never got, but. I like that. I was like, damn, I, I can't remember seeing that anywhere else except right here. Yeah, I mean, even if it wasn't, like, attachable to Snake Mountain, if it was its own little thing, you just have, like, this skull that could fit multiple vehicles, but that you could still just, like, push a button and it'll, like, shoot them out. That would that would have been... Something. Missed opportunity, Mattel. Missed, yeah, definitely. But, uh, so this is something they implemented. And you seen, obviously, Skeletor with watching his monitors was at first excited, thinking Merman was getting the job done. Then he's seen up, oh, things didn't work like he wanted, so he's going to go out and he's going to try to take care of business. He's going to have to pick up all the crap and the mess that Merman didn't do. I guess if you want a job done right, you got to do it yourself, basically, what Skeletor is doing. I'm just thinking here, because uh, Merman is summoning like stingrays and sharks and sea serpents. I would be... I wish we could have uh, got more of a, a visual image of that with like everything, a uh, big old sea battle going on you know like the yeah, yeah. like merman yeah. and he-man are like clashing on the ice and skeletor shows up and just they're they're surrounded by just like sharks and killer whales just fighting each other that'd be kind of cool which we get to see a little bit a little coming bit. up which i do like but uh i guess there's only so much you know what's funny is think of the amount of stuff that they have to fit into these 40 some pages you know it's like They've already done quite a bit, but I guess when you're kind of limited to basically that one image in a storybook instead of compared to like a comic book with panel, panel, panels, you know, they have to pick and choose what they want to set in yeah. there. But but you're right. I, it would have been nice to see a little more, but we get something, as you'll see, coming up. Because you're right. I mean, Skeletor's telling Merman what to do and what to summon, and Merman's doing it, but then, bam, 
a little flip, you know, right here because Tila's creatures, there was one that was sitting there hiding the whole time, and it was the killer whales, which basically, bam, are going to take out these sea serpents and everything else. I like, though, that Skeletor and Merman, this little pissed off back and forth, like, Merman's kind of not going to take it, you know? He's going to fight back at Skeletor as they're shooting at each other. It's like, right. so they're sitting there, they're having a battle. It's not even He-Man battling yeah. with Skeletor. It's Skeletor and Merman having their own. Well, that's always the thing with villains. They they can never they they get too selfish. That's why they half the time they never succeed when they team up. So oh, definitely, yeah, always and one over the other. <clears throat> I I ate cashews right before we did the show, and I'm kind of regretting that decision because it it feels like some still stuck in my teeth and a, a fragment just like threw back in my throat and i thought i was gonna call for a second anyway as long as you don't puke live but uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're right so you see the the crew of the seagull were seeing all this happening before their eyes this battle but yeah merman had a little slip sword went so he figured i'm gonna jump back in there too but skeletor there he's left floating on that little piece of ice <laughs> yeah. that's shrinking as rotons away too. and you can and see the, was, the the worry on his face just in that that shot yeah. right there he's like ah shit Yes, and like even though we know we've seen him multiple times, just use a spell to boom, disappear, and you know teleport. It's like you know it's not in every story, so you got to see him in some kind of peril. I just thought, admittedly, when you get to the next pages, I thought, okay, he man will like maybe save the day or you know bring Skeletor in, and it's uh, it was kind of twist to see that you know that never happened. As no. you'll see when it gets to the next yeah. panel, it's kind of leaving you think, okay, Skeletor just left out there. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's the killer whales could have died. Maybe this uh, could have been the <laughs> end of them but especially when you're seeing this panel i mean this page here this you know two-page spread of the killer whale it's like could have took skeletor out pretty easily but i'll pass it back to you i mean that, that's kind of the hilarious part i could just see he-man just standing there arms crossed just looking out just kind of waving at skeletor it's like hey man you're on your own i can't do anything uh-huh as i like that and even when adam's in there talking to teal about that and you know saying Merman's not the bravest of creatures. Skeletor is going to be very cold and wet before Merman plucks up the courage to face him, let alone rescue him. So that just I like that it was just left as a little cliffhanger, even though I at first was thinking he was going to get rescued. But they leave it at that. It'll go to the last two pages. And, and there, and another at least forward shot of the Sea Eagle. Like you said, yeah. they, they drew many different parts of it. I like kind of look. You got a little nice little ending right there. And Talon Finder returned to Castle Grayskull with Man at Arms, and it was it was a good story. I mean, I, it's I mean, you know, maybe, I, I again, like the I most like, amazing. Okay, I like how they you know illustrated the Tila's butt crack. Well, you know, you, see, you know, you should put a little bit up there, just a, a little bit. And even the toy has it, but you know, gotta have yeah. some separation. Otherwise, you can't really tell what what an ass is when you're looking sometimes. <laughs> so you got to see where the cheeks are. But no, it was a nice yeah. little sunset <laughs> and a nice little ending. But uh, it was a good story. Like I said, it's not an epic story. It's not a shit story, but it's a fun story, and it's yeah, something yeah, that, just, again, if just, those, they, yeah. just all around something just totally different than, than what yeah. you're, you're used to getting into. So, yeah, I, I didn't mind it at all, aside from just okay. a little bit of art of Adam and He-Man just was kind of, eh. But everything else Some was fine. <laughs> It might have looked a little little different, but it was still good. But So that's that story. Now we'll hit to some of the topical stuff that was happening with the Masters of the Universe Origins card back art, Boom. some of the reveals, and of course then we'll get to uh, all the question and answers with uh, everybody here in the chat room. Well, I'll put the, the card back art up here first. So we have He-Man and Skeletor, and all of these are fantastic. I, I can't... Okay. It, it makes me... When I see them in... On the shelf, because I'm used to just letting the figures breathe, man. I, packaging is one thing, keeping shit in the box. All right, some stuff I do that too, but these, like, I feel like I'm going to have to at least keep the cards. I'm not going to throw those away. What I'm hoping is eventually they could offer these in, like, just prints, meaning, you know when this goes on the card back, on the back, they're going to have text on it and yeah. logos, and, you know, I was like, damn, I always want to see the art clean. Just like back in the day, the Errol McCarthy art that we had, it's like, yeah, of course you've seen most all the pictures, but there was once in a while a little text like, oh, I wish I wasn't there. Oh, I wish that hole punch wasn't there because they're going to punch it right there to pop it on the pegs. But, yeah. yeah, I think Axel did all the art on this. I mean, there was people that did the art with him. I forgot who did the um, – damn it, I hate that I didn't know who did the coloring, but I believe Axel did all the line art. I don't know if he inked it. I wish that Grimbot would have been here in the chat room, but 
these are beautiful pieces. Yeah, that, I, they're amazing. So I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the cards. I'm definitely gonna take the figures out. Of course, I think maybe I don't know. I, I'm kind of do, do I just out. buy do I just buy pull a Tyler and buy two and keep one in the the packaging and take the other <laughs> one out. Whatever the hell makes you uh, happy. I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, Joe. Uh, I if 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 they hopefully are around here, which I'm sure they will be, and they'll hit multiple stores. I mean, I just will be able to get one set. But if you have the money and you can get two, go ahead and buy two. Keep one sealed yeah, and keep one to open. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. Oh, but, but hey, even think of this: if you open them up. It, the back is where the card art is, so when you take them out of the package, it's not going to ruin the back of oh, the well, card. Oh, yeah, I so. know that. I know that, but I'm sure it's going to be nice on the front, too. Did you yeah. have oh, a, a, Did you have a particular favorite out of these that were shown? I think, I honestly, I think my favorite might be Beastman's out of everybody. I'll wait till you get to that, because I, I see these uh, two here. I can't remember how many more there were that you were going to pop up. Right now, I just see the He-Man Skeletor. Yeah, and well, uh, The next one here is Man-at-Arms and Beast-Man. I, I do. Well, I mean, I even use the Beast-Man to promote the episode, so you might as well say, hey, I guess that's the one, because a lot of little homages to things. I won't say them all. I'm sure people can catch where some of these come from, but his art has creatures that you've seen in other... Uh, other media from the past, which I like, but yeah, I do like the Beast Man one. So far, out of the four you showed, yeah, yeah. Uh, and oh. next, and next up here is Tila and Evil Lynn, which uh, I'm kind of curious here with with Tila's because we have King Randor back there, and he's uh, like his hair and his beard are white. Oh well, that's uh, if you remember the Orcos card back art. They had uh, King Randor and Queen Marlena both looking old. Even in some of the mini comics and the other comics, I mean, they were depicted with gray hair a lot of times. So that's the scene, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, Orko's card back art when they had the background of uh, them in the, the palace room or whatever the hell you want to call it, the throne room. Well, there we so, go. Learned yeah. a little something new today. But I, I do like uh, Tila's a lot as well because we get Merman just getting... A lot's going on too. Sometimes, face, yeah. yeah, and sometimes it's dazzling. Not that I'm saying there's nothing wrong with Evil Lens because that's beautiful too. But sometimes when you get a lot of things going on, or especially when there's a little hidden homage, Easter eggs, or something, it kind of uh, I don't know, makes it stand out. Man, I, I, I'm actually the closer that we start to get to these, the more excited I am for them and to be able to hopefully see them in a store. Yeah, I, I think that's I the other thing. I thought about that too later, but yeah, go ahead. That's the other thing that kind of worries me is just like how the case ratios are going to be. If it's going to kind of be how the Masters of the WWE universe figures have been, where like if you see them once, you won't see them again for a month and a half. No, I mean hell, I think if no, I mean if they would keep selling, I could see them just constantly keep restocking as long as they're selling. Then why not? They would just order more, and I'm sure that the case pack ratios, I'm sure they'll be evened out. They won't, I think, do the disaster of four one one for a six pack. It'll be should be two two two. But I mean that's just me and wishful thinking. But I yeah, I in no way see them doing anything insane or stupid to piss fans off thinking I couldn't get Tila, but you know because there was four He Man's, one Tila and one Man in Arms, and they sold quick. And no, I don't see that. I think they've learned from their mistakes in the past. I would think. Now was that the last of the arts before you get to the figures that we'll show or what? Uh, I can't remember. Yep, that is the last of the card back art. Okay. All right, Joe. Here we go. Boom! Power Con exclusives. We we got the images for everybody. This was announced. Was this yesterday that this was announced? Or where they showed uh, all this off? I think it was... Think well, it, you know what's weird? I almost thought... Okay, Saturday I think they showed she but I thought Friday they might have showed He-Man and then... I don't know, I but don't either know. way, I'm glad you got this picture up here to keep it in context. Because some people, when they seen the figures, were wondering, why the hell does Skeletor and Beast Man, and why does someone look so weird? And remember, it's based off of the Lords of Power collection. Remember what they were originally maybe, you know, planning on calling it in these early designs of the figures. And it's a great homage to it because these definitely will not look like the Origins figures. The Origins Skeletor is quite different from this, the same as Merman, Beast Man. I like all the little details, like especially Man at Arms. He was one you could tell all these extra details added. Some things that shocked me, and it ain't being like trying to be annoying about stuff, but I was surprised that He-Man's axe 
wasn't changed up a little because it didn't look like the Lords of Power He-Man axe. And I was surprised Skeletor's Havoc staff wasn't separated with the ram's horn to be a little thinner. Those are just two little stupid nitpicks. I'm not doing that to be an idiot. But either way, these all look great. And I believe that these are... Um, what date is it? They're going to be offered, obviously, for you know the attendees. But I think non-attendees will have a chance to get these two. And I think someone was just posted today by Val, maybe, of how to order them. If I can see that later, I'll let Nathan know, and he can pop it down in the uh, the link below to let you know where you can find the details. But what what I'm seeing more about these is okay. It's just a quick little ramble. I remember when the 2000 X figures were out. And they were, you know, it was announced, okay, the line is ending. And people were really disappointed because there were so many figures they couldn't get. But then they announced that, wait a second, they, they're, I think it was through NECA. God, was it fucking NECA? That's terrible if I couldn't remember who did it. But, they, well, either way, they were going to do stactions. They were going to do statue versions of characters you didn't get in figure form, like the 2000X, but they're just not going to be posable. People were in an uproar. They're like, this is stupid. I don't want a stupid statue of them. I don't care if they're going to be the same size. I don't want them. But then they came out and people were like, damn, these things are amazing. They were freaking out. I mean, once you got them, you loved them. Then after that, here came the Masters of the Universe Classic figures. They showed the first ones, and I remember it, and nobody can deny this. They've seen it in all the He-Man boards and websites and everything. Anyone that's seen them said, these figures look stupid. They look like just slightly bigger vintage figures with more artic articulation. Who cares? I don't want them. <laughs> they came out. Everybody yep. lost their shit and loves them. Now, again, here comes these. And a lot of people are saying a lot love them, but there are those. And I respect if they don't like them, but they say, I don't like them. They're smaller versions, maybe less articulation. The details isn't much. I don't know if I want to get them. But I'm going to think, just like almost everything else, when you get them, you're like, damn, they're cool. Again, that might not happen with everybody, yeah. but... It's just a pattern that has happened with every set of things that came out. People said they're shit, then they get them, and then they love them. But uh, I'm just super psyched about these because, I mean, it's back in retail. It's hell affordable for me because I just can't afford the other stuff. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, like, when you've seen these, like I said, I mean, they look cool as shit. Plus, we're going to see a she one here, too, which yes. is a cool-looking she yeah, But uh, the these spot. are cool exclusives. These aren't going to be sold at stores, so yeah. that's the pisser of it all. Yeah, but that's so cool. that's going to be the thing. We'll have to see how all that turns out for like the non-attendees. I think Val is looking into doing that again for people to to get them and set it up so people that aren't able to go can obtain them. So we'll kind of see that as more information kind of gets passed around. But yes, Joe, yes. you had this uh, comparison picture for Man in Arms that you had me pop up. Yeah, like I said, because I just wanted to show because some people didn't understand the context or thought maybe there wasn't much difference. I just want to say, yeah, there is the Origins Man at Arms, and then there's the Lords of Power exclusive one. Yeah, you can see they're quite different. I mean, I mean, those and with Beast Man and Skeletor. I mean, the He Man one, yeah, almost kind of pretty much the same. So it's not like Super Psych doing backflips. Right. Uh, only so much you could do with him, but. Th that's just one example of the vast difference of how the Origins one will look and how the exclusive one is. And that she one is badass looking. That is a great looking she figure too. And I'm assuming, obviously, with the comb. It, well, I can't say that because Classics figure came with a comb and it was, you know, molded hair. But that looks like brushable hair. So a good other homage to the vintage style Princess of Power figures. But looks good. Really detailed. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious how all this will ultimately pan out once the Origins line comes out is there going to be more discussion too that's like well let's find a way to bring she-ra into the mix with this and put it out there for people or if they can find a workaround whatever but uh, it's it's an exciting time whether you you love them or you don't like these regardless it, it'll be nice to walk into a store and just see <laughs> that section of those oh things. hell yeah and you know what i was gonna say real quick i feel bad for you grim Grim, we and Nathan just talked at the beginning. Yeah. There was a time change. We hit the clocks went forward an hour because I was wondering where the fuck is Grimbot? He's always here at the <laughs> He's beginning. He's always here. Well, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. Well, uh, now you popped up. He's like, yeah. Where's the vintage Shira sword? Because this sword that she's holding definitely doesn't look like the vintage toy. But again, I don't know the direction of what this is all going to be kind of like based on. But still a great looking figure. But uh, yeah, it, people are pretty excited. Again, there's those that aren't. But you know, you never know their minds. They might change, but they might not. And if they still don't like them, hell, they don't like them. But you're right. It's an exciting time to be a He-Man fan because you're having toys having cartoons, 
you know, you're having a lot of stuff coming out. So hopefully it could just bring back that brand and bring back the popularity of Masters of the Universe like it used to be. Will it be maybe as grand as it was back in the day? Maybe not, but you never know. Right. But it would just be good to get some good representation of Masters of the Universe in a positive way yeah. to where people can get excited about every month or, you know, keep them going. And, and that's that's what I hope, that even if you don't like the Origins figures, that hopefully the, the cartoons strike a chord with you and you enjoy something of this new batch of shit that's coming out. I hope there's something that fans can latch on to and like. Right. And I mean, the best case scenario would be that all of these things come out and we all just love it for the most part. But I know that that's not going to happen. No, of course not. You could pop us back on so now they can look at our ugly mugs. Well, I mean, well, look at my mask and look at you. Oh. But... Joe, no, I didn't. No, Joe, I, that's no, I, no wrong. hey, no, I, it's fine. That, it's fine, Joe. I'm ugly. I, 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 I get it. I did not. I get it. You know what's weird? I say shit, and I swear to God, I don't mean it in the way it sounded, but after I say it, I'm like, that mm -hmm. sounded wrong. I was not that insulting. Or, no. <laughs> You're like, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you come back on, and all I see is a middle finger or something. That's what I should have done, but no, I, I, <laughs> I didn't do that. So I, I guess uh, go ahead and pop your questions up there, and I will start to read some of the comments because we, we had some interesting things happen in the comment section of last week's video but i'll start off first here with blue haired lawyer i was having a discussion about motu origins with a good friend and we both agree that origins probably would have been much better received in 2000 or possibly even after the 2000 x line ended for it to come after classes ah, classics is a bit of a regression for the lack of a better word granted opinions always vary i want to cherry pick origins while my friend has zero interest in it i agree that mattel dropped the ball uh, at Toy Fair, I think we can all agree on that. If they had perhaps shown some concept art for upcoming figures, that would have been somewhat promising, or even like a written list to confirm uh, what people were having suspicions about what was coming after. I really wish there was some way that true actual fans could be allowed to write and draw a series of licensed one-off comics. I really believe we could see some awesome character-driven Motu stories with incredible art. I think that would be a cool yep. opportunity. I don't know why... Uh, marvel dc any any of the other smaller publications haven't done that as like maybe like a one-off like an, an online digital kind of thing that people can work on their own stories and submit them and then they can pick like a handful and actually like put them on their website or maybe even produce some in a book in a limited run i think that would be a, a good kind of back and forth it would it would be interesting i mean i mean we can agree like you said sometimes they always say you definitely don't want to give you know all fans too much power because you never know what they would run with it or what they do but it's always still interesting to see what a fan could come up with because maybe they could write an amazing story you know you got to look at the amount of fan projects that people do for so many things like example friday the 13th it's dead in the water because of all this legal crap unfortunately yep. but with that you have fans there are so many fan movies coming out it's unreal some not that great, yeah. but some of it I yeah. won't mention. Uh -huh. But um, one of those some bitches in particular felt like a theatrical movie, and that's mm -hmm. Never Hike Alone. If you have not seen this, I just got to say for you guys out there, Never Hike Alone. It's a fan made movie. When you watch it, it feels theatrical like, and it wasn't a giant budget. Kickstarter made not a lot of people in it, and believe me, not a lot of people in it. But they get it. These fans it's who engaging. did it, they got start. To it, yeah, it is. Yeah, start to finish. You, you just you are in it. From yeah, from the get go, but it's it's fan made. It's by fans for the fans, and they did it right. But then sometimes you get fans who figure, okay, let's get everybody that was involved in the past Friday the Thirteenth movies. Let's have like eighty people in this film. Let's have such a convoluted story, and then it sucks. Yeah. See, sometimes things can backfire. There's some good things that can come with fans with anything. Yes. Same thing with video game stuff. But but I agree, it would be nice for some stuff. And remember, never hike alone. I'm not going to say the other one because I'm not being disrespectful, yeah, but there's a bad I, one out there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's fucking terrible. Anyway, Jason, <laughs> Jason Havlick, which I'll, I'll read because Tyler actually replied to this as well. I have a random question about a Motu concept character called Snowman. Have you guys ever heard of him? I've seen a picture of the character, and he looks like Stratos on skis. I would love to see this character brought to life in figure form or like in another medium. Tyler responded to that and said that's one of my absolute favorite concept characters. I put him in the top three of what should have, what sh I think Tyler left a word out here, what we should oh, have received. There we go. If you're playing the Joe Amato uh, F-bomb knocking shit over game, go ahead and take your shot now. Uh-oh. 
Am I gonna, am I gonna lose Joe? Because he, he probably picked up his tablet and, and turned his stuff off. I guess I have. So, way to go, Joe. Thanks. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll call him again. Fantastic. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. There Am we I go. Here? Yep, you're here. <laughs> God damn. This uh, hey, you guys got to give it to me. That has not happened in um, uh, uh, two what? months. Oh, yeah. More like two weeks. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. I'm sorry. This has not happened in so long. God damn. Okay. Uh, what happened? What did, <laughs> what did I leave off? Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the concept character Snowman. What are your thoughts, Joe? Shit. <laughs> <Dude>, um. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Um, anyways, you know, I, that is a cool <laughs> look at gossip figure. Um, it was in the Power and Honor Foundation catalog, but uh, I liked a lot of the concept stuff that we never got, you know, and, and I know, of course, we'll never get half of that that was in there, but uh, and other things that they've had as well. But uh, yeah, I do like the figure. I'm, I'm thanks for that comment and that question. And sorry, my mind got so frazzled after I hit that <laughs> shit. I didn't know what happened. Yeah, it's all right. Like, he's, gonna, go. he's gonna feel terrible about it after we're done recording is but i can't believe that happened like it's fine i don't i don't care it just oh, sucks because i have to like keep talking and there's there's dead air and then i have to wait for you to come back in and i don't know if it's gonna like mess with your camera with how the people are gonna see it so it's a lot of stuff oh, but all right, i should have actually gotten a picture of snowman and had it up but i, I don't have one on me uh drawing well, some people could google yeah they can google though yeah. yeah uh well do we got any questions in the chat and go ahead and we'll take a couple of those we'll get to some at least some I'll, of the uh pop back into the comments from last week after that okay well first i seen zan brown said is anybody counting joe's f-bombs i think i had zero up until that second right there where 30 came out after i dropped the tablet <laughs> well, but, what, uh, what happened did you just like hang up on the call as you went to pick it up or something i was like I, don't, well, that, I, I think when it fell it might have hit a button when i picked it up because uh i don't know but i slapped it and it went down you still got me yeah Okay, I couldn't hear you for a second. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, uh, Grimbot said, by the way, did you mention Skeletor has wrong feet? Should have human feet like the prototype? I missed that, Grim. Like I said, I was looking at a couple details, like I said, that are different. But, uh, well, I, I guess they got as many as they could. It's still cool as shit, but you're right. I mean, I, I know some things weren't as exact. Uh uh, Jason Havlick said, my interest in all things Masters of the Universe has definitely been renewed, which is, that's that's what we like to hear. That's what we want. We want to get I, excited. I, I think that's what they're hoping for as well. Yeah, I mean, that's what you want. I mean, my God, how bad would it be? These toys come out and this cartoon came out, and it sucked. It's like I said, I guarantee that that'd be the end of Masters. Nobody would want to ever touch it again probably for you know, a long time. If the toys failed and a the cartoon, they'd be like, you know, there's nothing they can do. But so hopefully it will hold interest. Um, DJ Tag says it's great. It picked up so much Masters of the Universe retail so they could see that they could make money. Yeah, and definitely you, you want to be making money. Um, and when we were talking about I said you had an ugly mug, which I didn't mean, but Strobe Life video did say, and that's why you should be wearing the other mug. Right, well, you know, Joe's got to make it and send it to me, so. Uh, so uh, well, yeah, I will, I will. And uh, Curtis Ackerman said, nice t-shirt, Nathan. Uh, thank you. Uh, said, Zen Brown, he has cussed uh, too much for anyone to count. He's like, uh, livers are gone now for anyone doing the drinking game. Adam said, Joe or Nathan, when I was in the hospital as a kid, I was shown a Masters of the Universe coloring book for 1980s and my question what makes it be cool i never owned one when i was shown years ago well i mean well i guess adam i don't know how many you know you've looked at and some people didn't know but they weren't all just coloring books you know there's the coloring slash activity books and of course some of those coloring books were actual stories which had unique stuff in them as well which if you include the sticker books and the paint with water those had some interesting yeah. ones. Like I said, a lot of people didn't know about the Evil Olympics that, you know, Alcala drew that. And when people found out, oh, my God, Alcala did more. And that was a really cool one. That was a sticker book. But uh, yeah, a lot of, I think that's the attraction of those is once you look and you see there's more to them than you thought, that's what makes them fun. Plus, who yeah. doesn't like coloring some shit? Well, I, I, I was always a fan of, of the the activity slash coloring books. If it was just a straight up coloring book, I'd, like, I, I kind of liked doing the other stuff, like the the... 
word searches and like the mazes and it, uh, what else yeah, would, like would you have in those things? Um, Hell, there was even ones. I remember you would like stare. God forbid, I'm gonna have to bring up the shittiest character, but Stratos. There was this one image where there was like Stratos, and it was like just blacked out image of him with I think a. I think that was it. Just blacked out. I don't know if there was a dot by him, but you had to just stare at that page for 30 seconds. Then they said close your eyes and move your head or something. And then you see an image of Stratos like flying in the air in your eyes when you close it. So, you know, a lot yeah. of, yeah, a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. The missing things I used to love where it'd say, look at this picture. Yeah. Now, I was actually going to bring that up. Change. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the, what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. And it's a, don't look back. But of course, as a kid who didn't cheat. So, um, JSP did say, check out videos for the fan made Terminator game, TechCom 2029. We'll have to check that out, JSP. Because, again, yeah, it's always cool seeing what fans do. Um, uh, let me see. I, I wanted to scroll down a little bit. If we got jobs, uh, Curtis Ackerman, Mattel, to me, is like that ex-girlfriend that treated us like crap at the end and left us for another guy. Then just as we were starting to fall for Super 7, she comes crawling yeah. back. That's a crazy – that's an interesting analogy, Curtis. <laughs> uh, definitely. And uh, well, it, it would, it back I, Honestly, it would kind of be more like – uh, you're you're starting to to fall for another girl, and then your ex girlfriend shows up, and she's really crazy, and like <laughs> kidnaps or like kills the girl that you had an interest in, and now they're just like, no, you're with oh, me okay. now. <laughs> well, I mean, think about that. It's like Super Seven's not really going to produce anything else now that Mattel is sort of, uh, hey, we're back in it again. So a little dark. You never know. I mean, I, there's always a possibility possibility of yeah. maybe classic style figures i mean you never know what the future holds but we do appreciate that um sportman says what do you guys think of the power con exclusives <laughs> don't rewind. know if that's already been just, yeah yeah rewind love them can't wait uh, <laughs> uh let's see grandma said oh hey joe what did you think of no oh, fuck. Uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm not gonna touch that, yeah, that we, was, yeah, we uh, won't, yeah we won't touch that one that's uh it was in- interesting yeah um sportman do you guys buy the mega constructs figures I do. uh I don't well. I do yeah, not it. that they're bad. It's just yeah. yeah no, yeah. I got them. Uh, I got them all kind of lined up here. Well, not all of them, but I have quite a few lined up here because I got that the pack, the multi pack that Walmart had for a while. I actually have the Wind Raider down here that I was thinking about putting together and. and they got a lot of stuff coming. Yeah, I think don't yeah. they? Don't they have like a road time and yep. a lot of things? I mean, they're they're fantastic little figures. If they're in your area, pick them up. They're affordable. They're cool. It's just yeah. Again, around here, I just never see them. So things just, I guess, sell quick. Jason Havlick said they hope so. The brand definitely feels like it has a real chance to succeed this time around, and I really hope so. Carlos said most people who don't like Origins or WWE Masters have not had them in hand. I was apprehensive at first, but in hand, these are awesome. And and Nathan can attest to that, at least for the WWE figures, too. Now, uh... I think the the Sting figure was kind of meh, but the the Triple H one, I think Finn Balor with the design that they went with actually fits in and works with what they were going for. And the Warrior looks cool I, to me. Once you take all of his armor off and it's just ultimate just by warrior, himself, he looks, he looks yeah. Awesome. He looks- but yeah, no, I, I the 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 quality on them when you get them in hand, I enjoy it. I like it. I like what they did with them. But I'm not I'm not yep. gonna get Faker Cena or Fisto Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns. I just give me the Mysterio, and with Macho Man, it'll probably be the same thing. I'll take, I'll take the the armor off of him and just let him be Macho Man. Yeah, that it's cool. I mean, they do look great as is for some of them. Some of them are just too bland, but I see what you mean. Um, Sportman says, Nathan, Joe, will you guys ever do a Masters of the Universe collection video tour? <laughs> I could do that. I just got to set some stuff up to be a little more streamlined in here and, and nathan he'd take you it'd be like an hour on his tour no he's got so I, well I, I well with my master's collection it wouldn't take long because i just I basically just have the vintage that i have up there and i've actually gotten a few more classics so i'm the classics collection is building a little bit right now i'm kind of maybe next month if if we're something. like into it i mean, it, I, mean yeah. I if you guys would have any interest in it i could do like with the shelf here my my detolfs here i could like show you everything that's sort of around me and kind of go 
so you can see it better or something. Yeah, I can do that and put you it on something. the channel. We'll do a live tour. You're going to go past Emily, and she's going to, no, like, you know, hide I, I, face. Yeah, I won't, I won't, make, I won't do a, a live tour, but I'll, I'll record something and put it on the channel. And show oh, off, we're going to do a live tour. We're going to do a live tour, damn uh, it. Fem, Femmon says, Joe always wears the mask, but can never be bothered to wear the pants. Wouldn't that have been something if when this all flipped over, <laughs> you see, oh, I wasn't wearing pants? What no. a disaster that would have been. Always but, no, wear I, pants, I wear Joe, for, please. Yeah, Think I, of God. Think of the children. Think of the children. Um, Hodai Wells said, hi, guys. Hey, I haven't seen hey, you here in a while. Yeah, Hope everything's all. Curtis said, I've had them in hand and still say no thanks. I'll stick with Super 7. <laughs> Mattel can suck hey, it. Well, yeah. you know, that's, hey, that's your opinion. You, anybody can think what they want. I mean, you guys heard what I said that sometimes pisses people off, and I don't do that to get people mad. But, I mean, we ap always appreciate, you know, well, just an honest opinion. It's, well, you know, as long as people ain't being vile, he's just, you know, what the hell? Well, I mean, it is kind of annoying that Mattel essentially kind of abandoned it for a while, and Super 7 came along. It's like, all right, well, we'll, we'll keep this going. We'll... We'll keep the just. We'll stay on track, and now all of a sudden, Mattel's like, "Nah, hey, we need that back." Like, I yeah, and you know, it's weird. I get the turn off, and some that. people, and, and again, almost like when I was talking about the figures earlier, people were even apprehensive when Super Seven took over. Like, oh, what's this new company? Oh God, these suck. Oh, they're not getting better. And then they started getting in. Like, it's pretty good. And then here came Mattel again. So I could see it, but you never know. Curtis's mind might change, and he might still just keep that in the mind about sucks. You never know. It could happen. <laughs> um. Uh, Zembron said the only coloring book he had was the one that used the water instead of the paint, which I, I like those, but I never wanted to do them too much because it seemed like if you put too much water, all that color would bleed. So almost all my coloring uh, with water books, I left alone. I don't know if you ever had those, Nathan, but I didn't want to touch them no more to ruin them. Yeah, no, I, I, I never had those. So I, I'm like looking at the stuff, like the comments on last week's video too, to read some more stuff. I, I, I think I just want to... I'll do I'll do two more. Descends the Gray Skull, another awesome show. Always good to see the trio together. Which someone uh, uh, I'm trying to remember uh, who was it? Was it Brad Collins that asked if Tyler was going to be on this week's episode? And I was like, not this week. So I'll go ahead and reveal. It's not something that we're like. It's just a rough schedule. But I think the plan is to have Tyler on every other week. Now, there might be some episodes where he's on consecutive weeks, or there might be some where, like, he's on an episode, and then Joe and I do two episodes, and then he's back. So, we're just kind of working Tyler back in, and letting him just kind of, we're gonna just go at his own, like, pace. He just won't want to be on in two weeks if that's when part issue five or something oh, comes yeah, out yeah. or something. Yeah, and, 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 be on that and, if... yeah, and if that kind of falls in line with the thing where it's like, well, this would be the week that Tyler would be on, but it's like, all right, well, issue five came out. There's no way in hell Tyler's going to do that. But uh, Price at the Seat <clears throat> is a cracking episode, although I was never a huge fan of the Keldor Skeletor tale. It felt it was the best way to show the transition without doing multiple episodes about him. I always preferred Skeletor's background from Filmation, where he was a demon from another dimension who ended up a member of the Horde. Yeah, I always just liked Skeletor's origin from just... Back in the day before, you know, in the cartoons, I just liked him being an evil demon from another dimension who's conquered so many worlds and was drawn to eternity and wants to get the power of Grayskull and figures he could rule the universe. I just liked an evil being. I didn't need to know the backgrounds. Again, it, it works for a lot of characters. I can understand people like, you know, like a backstory to everything. But for Skeletor, yeah. sometimes there's just some people I just want... Let them be evil to be evil. That's yeah. it. I don't, I don't want to hear well, nothing it, else from it's them. Kinda I feel it. Less, yeah. less is more in some cases. Like Michael Myers, some cases. perfect example. You just need that basic little bit. We don't need to know anything else. And then Rob Zombie came along. It's like, oh, well, here's all this backstory. And he's he was killing dogs. And it, was, and it was typical. And... It was. I knew that was going to yeah. happen. I was like, I know what it is. Like, they're going to white trash this up, yeah. hillbilly this. And, yeah. and sure enough, he did it. I mean, at least in the other ones. I, I love 4, 5, and 6. 4 and 5 more back in the day. It mm -hmm. was a different origin, yes. Yeah. But it worked. But you're right. Everybody was getting an origin. And Michael was one I thought maybe wouldn't have had one. We had the origin for Jason, which for, in my mind, I told you, my two childhood heroes were He-Man and Jason. I didn't look as <laughs> at Jason as... I always what, said the story. What, what is that? I never looked what at him. Tell the people I want to be strong and I want to kill people. No, no, not, not in that aspect. It's just from the get go. I was like, this poor kid, you <laughs> yeah. know, 
who had some issues, he drowned. He wasn't being watched. They should have watched him. Yeah. His mother snapped, started killing, but then you find out he really wasn't dead, and he's seen the only person that loved him and cared for him killed by these people, and now he's taking revenge. And in my mind as a kid, I was like, oh, he's a good guy, poor guy. Yeah, he's I mean, killing yeah. him, but yeah. poor Jason. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so weird, weird. Go ahead. I, I think the, the, the most interesting comment that we got on last week's video comes from Pablo MZK. I think fans of negativity would be a better name for this podcast. And, you know, I, I chimed in I with it. stuff. Joe chimed in with stuff. Uh, and Tyler. But I was. Yeah. You I respected what he said. Oh, yeah. You know? No, yeah. I, it's because. Well, we'll, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, really. It's what we always say that, you know, like when we're doing the show and there's something we might not, you know, like and we say it and it might anger people just like it did for Pablo. Yeah. But like I said, we're not trying to be like no. malicious when we do it. And you know what? He did in, in 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 kind back to us saying, you know, it just seems like you guys were a negative on a lot of the new stuff. And it's good. He he should speak up like that. Like, don't just sit back and then say, but these guys seem like they're negative about all the new stuff. I can't stand this show. Tell us. Yeah, and I like that he did it. So he, I love it. Yeah. And I respected it. It yeah. was great. I loved hearing that, Pablo. I mean, if anybody feels like that, something that you're like, oh, you guys love this too much, hate this too much, say it. Because yeah. not everything is going to be perfectly great, and not everything is going to suck, but it's just honest opinions. Yeah. That's all, you know? Yeah. Tell us how you feel. I mean, we're not going to get yeah. mad at anybody. No, I don't get mad at all. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Joe's never gotten mad about anything <laughs> ever. No, I just sometimes I just uh, had anger issues, but I'm a good guy now. Um, <laughs> DJ Tag says Stratos is winning because Joe is the big, big is his biggest fan. Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. DJ Tags, that's why like, damn Stratos sucks. Um, just like Super Seven having more focus on reaction and Keshi figures. I know they were doing. I don't know if they're still doing more of that, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the reaction figures I think work in some is instances, but other times I'm just like, Man, I show no, like when they did the Ninja Turtle ones, I'm like, I already got like my vintage figures and the stuff that NECA's is putting out. Why would I want this version of this? It's, it's kind of like, uh, almost feel that it's almost on the same plane of Funko pops, but not really. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. I kind of look at reaction figures the same way I look at Funko Pops. Like, some of them are all right and a, a nice little novelty, and other times they're just like, eh, no, not, not for me. No, I admit. If, if you if like them, if the you money, like them, the card art on yeah. some of those is great. All, all the power oh, to you, but I'm just kind of like, eh. Yeah, I mean, I always, and that's uh, Jason Edmiston, I think, that does all that card art and everything for those uh, little reaction figures. It's beautiful art. And again, like I said, if people have the money, get get anything you want. Hell, if I had the money, I know I'd be buying it all, but I can't. But um, uh, there was one thing, wait, one thing I wanted to show here. Yeah, sure. I was going to say. Custom? No, not a custom, oh. but it's it's this comic. And it's issue nine. Oh, this is yeah. the one where you, I, I love the cover, but with Orc, I'm not going to run the story. I can at least say that in this, you know, Montork and Driel are quite different. Montork, you know, is, I mean, he's got like a sombrero. I have no clue why. Uh, Driel <laughs> has a purse and tits. I'm like, I, I don't know why, but it's definitely a way of differentiating them from the filmation versions. But what I'm going to say to you guys is after this video is over, just make a comment below what you think of the show, or any comments you want to make in the comment section, not in the chat room. So after this video is over, come back here, make a comment. And on Wednesday, from whoever, uh, you know, is doing this, watching us live comments, and anybody listening later, because I know some people do it days later, Wednesday in the Fans of Power Facebook group, not page, but Fans of Power Facebook group, which I think Nathan usually links down there. Pretty I'm going to sure spin a wheel. I'll take, yeah, I'm going to take all the names of everybody that left a comment. I'll put you on a wheel, spin it, whoever it lands on. I'll send you this copy of this issue free just for just being assholes and listen to our show. How about that? <laughs> just being love assholes and listening to our show. <laughs> yeah. I love you bastards. Every one of you. So, uh, but yeah, if you guys want to win that, I'll send that sucker off to you. I was like, so I'll spin the wheel and whoever it lands on first, Pam, the win, send it to you free of charge. See, I'm not that cheap. I mean, I am cheap, but, you know, well, I got this, uh, like I said, at a good deal when I went to a comic book store. I was like, well, I already have that issue. I'm going to give it away to our lovely fans. See? I said that nice. I said lovely fans. And and if you haven't already and, and popped a like on there, go ahead and give it a like, too. But also, yeah, throw the, throw the comment down there. And it, it could be, I mean, 
mostly pertaining to what we talked about on the episode today. Just, uh, whatever. Don't just go in the comments and just type, like, one letter and be like, oh, well, I commented, you better put me on the wheel. Like, put something that's pertaining to the stuff we talked about. All right. And before we do in this, I'll try to... Curtis, Curtis Ackerman has a movie quote. There are two kinds of people. Those with loaded guns and those who dig. You dig? Um... God, it's, it sounds familiar, and it's not ringing a bell. Uh, I'm going to give 30 seconds. I don't know what you'll have to give the answer to me. And uh, do you know that, Nathan? Because it's not ringing a bell. It sounds really familiar. Especially with you dig. It's it's like, what's that? It's, it sounds too obvious, but let me see. Uh, lethal, lethal Weapon 2. Really? I don't we'll know. have to see. I'm just making a All guess. Right. I'm waiting for Curtis to pop it. While Curtis, I'm waiting for you to pop that answer in the chat room. Fatmon said, Joe, <laughs> you were staring at trolling girl boobs? Well, isn't that a strange fetish? Well, he is Joe after all. Well, <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's just because she didn't have boobs in filmation. And these are just obvious. They're just popping out and she's got a purse. And, oh, God, does she look weird. But Uncle Montour, God, what a, what a weirdling figure. Fun story, but... You guys will be entertained by at least seeing that. Maybe one day we'll put that up to read that comic, put all the images to see what you guys think of it. Um, Grimbot thought it was Shaft, and uh, Curtis Aikman said oh, it's yeah, the good, the yeah, bad. It's, it's, uh, on, it's on my shirt. I'm terrible with movie quotes. Unless it's well, like... Now that's pretty bad. Yeah. I know, unless it's like Basketball or Dumb and Dumber or something, like the ones that I've repeated over and over again. That Tyler it's and like, I are like poetic. Oh, not, everything else is just like... Well, Tyler like got me on Friday the Thirteenth Three. I yeah. love the movie, but he did a Shelley kind of quote, or somebody said something to Shelley, and I was like, I think it was something about I'm an actor or something. I was like, it just it wasn't those one of those quotes, boom, that was in my head. And he's like, I thought you were a Friday the Thirteenth fan. Yeah. You're just a poser. I, I but, mean, when, but, when the when the show's over, I'll just uh, go throw this shirt on the the grill outside and light it up. Yeah, because you just lost your fan card on the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll be honest; I don't even know if I've ever seen that movie. It's, I, it's, I don't think I. When it when it comes to westerns, I always lean more towards the Clint Eastwood and like the spaghetti style. I've never been much of a like a John Wayne guy. Most of that was just kind of boring to me. I never got into any of them. That's what made watching Back to the Future Part Three so hard. I was like, oh, I hate westerns, but I watched. I was like, eh. Then there was some movie. What what the hell was that with Mel Gibson? Where it was like uh, he was playing cards or something. And I was oh, like, oh, uh, uh, like, Maverick. Maverick. Yeah, I was like, that was okay. I, I could watch that. That was all right. But uh, yeah, I'm not much into westerns. But all right, guys. What I was gonna say, it was awesome. You know, having you here. Hope you enjoyed it. I tried to get everybody in the chat room. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell so you can always get notified when we go live. And until next time, have a powerful day. Tonight's WWE pay per view is the Elimination Chamber. The first one was in 2002 at Survivor Series for the World Heavyweight Championship. Who won the first ever Elimination Chamber match? And who did they defeat? I'm going to say two things. Uh, I don't know. And second, the Elimination Chamber has been around for 18 years? Yeah. Damn! Yeah, I, that, I thought that was kind of like a newer pay-per-view that came out like six years ago. I didn't well, know it's been no, 18 that, that, years. God. That, before they used to use the chamber and have at at different shows like the first one was that survivor series then they started doing the matches at the february show that was no way out at the time and then they did like they've done with all the other things tlc held in the cell they're like oh we'll just call the pay-per-view after that and that's kind of how wow. it's been lately well, who, who won because i didn't even know had no clue it was uh sean michaels he he beat triple h at the end uh, i'm trying to think of who else was in it booker t Rob Van Dam. It's the one where Rob Van Dam like got on top of the pod and jumped onto Triple H, and it like he his his shin landed on his neck, and it like really messed Triple H up for. Well, for I'm a have to bit. catch it on the network if they have it. I never knew nothing about it. I'll see yeah. if I can find that, or, Survi- or at least YouTube it. Oh, and that entire show is actually not half bad. So yeah, check that out. Survivor Series 2002. All right, I learned something again. Learn something new every day. So <laughs> see you guys next time.